Now, how many of you here have watched any of these movies or TV shows? <laughs> Can you imagine if this is in real life? Aliens lurking among us, hiding. How sure are you that right now, the person sitting next to you is not an alien? <laughs> how about your neighbors, your teachers? Your in-laws. <laughs> or even your partners. Now, my wife is sitting there. Sayang, you are not an alien, are you? Yes, I am. Oh, no. <laughs> well, though I just at the idea of having aliens among us, this is what actually occurring right now in our aquatic ecosystem. Invasion of alien species. Now, what does that mean? Definitely not that. <laughs> well, by definition, invasive alien species mean any species that are introduced outside its native range, whether accidentally or intentionally, and it possesses harm and threat to its new environment. Now, in Australia, recent reports have showed that we spend about $24.5 billion a year about 1.26% of the nation's GDP to combat pest food. Ecologically, the impact is just immeasurable. Now, in Australia, there are about 4,000 alien invasive species, including plants, vertebrates, invertebrates, and microorganisms. 180 of them are fishes. Now, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature listed eight species as the worst aquatic species globally. And lucky us, five of them are here in Australia. They include carps, tilapias, and also this small, tiny, little, but very nasty fish, the eastern mosquito fish, also known as Gambusia, and scientifically named as Gambusia holbrooki. Ah. <laughs> so they were introduced to Australia in 1925 to help us combat mosquitoes. And since then, they have become widespread all over the country. In Tasmania, this fish first appeared in 1993 in a pond at a small farm in Launceston, north of Tasmania. But lucky us, at that time, the Inland Fisheries Service have managed to eradicate this pest. But it reappears again in the year 2000. And this species is on the move. In the year 2018, a group of this fish was found at Lake Quichi, 10 kilometers south of Launceston, and also at Nunamara, about 23 kilometers east of Launceston. Now, this fish, they are actually not a good mosquito biocontrol agent. They don't eat mosquito larvae that much. So this so-called friend of ours has now become our main enemy. Now, the problem with this fish, it looks like native species. Now, a few years back, during a university e event, I met with this lady. She was traveling from interstate. And she was so shocked when I told her that this small, tiny fish is actually an invasive alien species. Why? Well, she found a group of fish at a nearby pond in her hometown. She brought them back to her house. And when the fish breed and give birth to young one, yes, they gave birth. Well, that will be another story. <laughs> and when the fish gave birth to young one, she released them back into the wild. <sighs> she thought she was saving the aquatic ecosystem. <laughs> but who can blame her? Her heart is at the right place. This fish just looks similar to any of our native fish.
Now, these small, tiny fish, they are bullies in the aquatic ecosystem. There are more than 30 native frogs, fishes, and even aquatic birds that become endangered because of these small, tiny fish. They are bullies, they compete for food, they interfere with reproduction, and they also attack small fish and tadpoles, causing population depletion of native species. Now, currently, there are two main approaches that have been used to control and eradicate this pest, physical and chemical approach. Now, for the physical approach, we use nets and traps to catch this fish. Now, in Launceston, at Tamar Island wetland, the current hotspot of this fish invasion, there are a group of dedicated volunteers that have been working tirelessly to catch this fish. Chemically, we use poisons such as rotenone and chlorine to kill this fish. Now, the problem with both methods is they are also harmful to native species. We might accidentally catch or kill native species. Other research have been done um, to try contraceptive methods and even trying to identify native species to predate on Gambusia, but they are inefficient. So what else can we do? We can't simply blast them, just like how they did in the movie Men in Black. <laughs> so this is where my story begins. My story as the MIB agent of the aquatic environment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, in 1967, a famous, researcher, a famous researcher, William Hamilton, suggested that a skewed sex ratio will lead to a, the extinction of a population. Now, normally, in any reproduce, reproducing species, the normal sex ratio will be one male to one female. Now, based on this suggestion, another uh, researcher, Professor Juan Guterres, in 2006, developed a model based on the XXXY sex chromosome system. In his model, he suggested that repeated introduction of YY female into a population will lead to an extremely biased male population. This model is known as the Trojan chromosome strategy. <laughs> now, some of you here might have heard of the Greek mythology, the Trojan War, or some of you might have watched this movie, Troy. So if you remember in the movie, the Greek built this huge, large, wooden hollow horse. They hide their army inside the horse, and the Trojan, who thought that they have won the war, brought the horse into the city. And at night, the Greek army came out of the horse, killed all the guards, opened up the city gates, and they managed to conquer the city of Troy. Now, this is the same strategy that we are using against Gambusia here in Tasmania. We plan to release female Gambusia physically, but with a Y, Y chromosome into the wild. They'll then breed with normal males, which will then lead to a male bias population. And when there's too many males, <laughs> just like that, the population will decline and collapse without harming native species. <laughs> now, you, some of you might say, um, female fish, why, why, how? <laughs> well, in fish, um, they actually have the ability uh, where we can manipulate the gender. There are other factors that determine the fish sex besides the sex chromosome. In nature, some of the fish, they can just simply, not simply, well, they can swap their gender from male to female or from female to male, like groupers, clownfish, Nemo, from the Finding Nemo's. Well, the ugly truth behind the movie, let me tell you. <laughs> but there are also other factors, such as temperature and chemicals. Now, since 2012, I've been working to develop Trojan female Gambusia. First, 
I try to understand the basic reproductive biology of this fish. How long does it take for them to breed, to become mature? When do they actually give birth? Morning or evening? And based on my observation, one female fish at a single time can give birth up to 400 babies. That's why they became invasive. After that, I tried several hormones to sex reverse the fish. I tried the hormones at different doses for a certain period of time and at a different life stage. Then, when I managed to sex reverse them, I assessed the reproductive fitness of the sex reverse gambusia. My team then developed methods and techniques to differentiate which one are YY female and which one are the normal XX female. Now today I stand proudly here to tell you that we have successfully developed the Trojan female gambusia. Yeah, we are on the right path to win this war, but we are not there yet. Next, we plan to move to the next stage, pond trials. And besides that, we also plan to combine um, genetic and growth development model to ensure the efficiency of this war strategy. Importantly, we are also developing methods and techniques to assess and monitor fieldwork with the support of volunteers. Yes, we need volunteers. We can't win this war alone. Now, before I stop, I would like to acknowledge the superheroes, the super strong, the warrior in our war against Gambusia, the group of volunteers at Tama Island Wetland, led by Dr. John Duggins. They have been working tirelessly in catching all these past fish, and at the same time, they have been gathering valuable data for our research. Now, you can be like them. We need you. You can be the superstars. You also can be the MIB agent to save our aquatic ecosystem. You can either register as a volunteer, or you can simply create awareness and stop spreading invasive species. Now, you can be the agent of change. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.